and welcome to this third tutorial on rotoscoping in Mocha for After Effects. In the first tutorials we've looked at drawing masks and drawing mats and also tracking items on this face that we want to cut out from the background. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at the issue of creating our actual shapes, our actual mats if you like, and then linking them to the tracks and outputting them to After Effects so that we can create a really good end result. This is where I'm going to use my Bezier tool and I'm going to use my Bezier item here, I haven't got anything selected, select the Bezier tool, a new layer will be created as soon as I start drawing. I'm going to hit the Z key or the Z key just to move in a bit so I can see what I'm doing and I'm going to click and drag. Now, of course this may not work very well because of my running other software so we'll just do the best we can in this particular instance. Holding the control key to pull these points out you can see this point here is none too happy, so I'm just going to pull it in there and down to there. And then this point, hold the X key to move around, I can draw right into him as widely as I like because I need to cover the whole of him and make sure there are no spaces between my tracks or else I will end up with gaps in my mat and he'll have gaps in his face. And then I'm going to come right out to his hair and I'm going to come out here in fact, I'm going to move this point up here and I'm going to take this one to the edge. Shift that point right in there. Because what I want to try and do is see if I can include the hair because the hair is on the same plane as the ear. And come down here, come down here, come down here, come down here, perhaps come down here as well. Pull that point in, pull that point in. Now, I've included the hair because there is another issue we have with hair. Obviously, I would play around and get this a lot more accurate in actual fact when it comes to it. And pull these out a bit and what have you to get around the hair. But now I've created this shape, what I want to do is I want to be able to create a feather around this edge of his hair. To do that, I need to select the actual points that I want to add a feather to. So it'll be these points here, and I'm going to do that with a marquee. And what I need to do is go to the Edge Properties and add the feather that I want. I reckon 2 pixels is probably what I'm looking for. And I can click Set. And now, if I zoom in, you'll see that I've got a little area here which is an Edge Feather just for those points. Now, that won't change as it goes through unless I change the Edge Feather at another point which I don't want to do, so just hit the space bar, you'll see that they'll, they'll play all the way through. Obviously I'm not at the right point, I need to go back until I find my whites. Do you see those points going white? That shows me that's the keyframe it's created on. Providing those white points is actually extremely helpful, it's one of those things I really like about Mocha. I know where the keyframe is, even if I can't clearly see it. Now this layer, layer 15 up here, is actually not going to be tracked. So I can turn off tracking, double click it to select it and call it my ear mat and hit return and now what I need to do I'm going to zoom out so we can see this a little bit better is I need to link my ear mat in fact I've just seen this point here which I just want to pull in a bit I'll go with that what I want to do now is link this ear mat with the ear track and it's done down here in layer properties layer properties right at the bottom it says link to track at the moment it says link to itself. It is the ear mat track and it's linking to the ear mat track. But if I click the drop down, you'll see that I've got one that says ear track and that's what I want to link to. So click ear track and now both layers are linked together so that when I hit the space bar, they're kind of moving as one. So there's my track, it's worked, it's done a reasonably good job and if it's not perfect, this is where you need to go in and start to move bits and pieces. So you can go to the appropriate place where it is furthest away. Always go for the furthest point. Don't do it as soon as it starts to drift. Always go to the worst point and make the change there. Okay, that's worked perfectly. However, I just want to point out one thing about this, this shape, this mat that we've created. Notice that it was actually originally created to link to the ear track and the ear is on this plane heading this way, whereas the face is actually on another plane. It's important to realise that should this gentleman have turned his head so that this ear was to come forward, the face would have gone sideways and as the ear came forward, this part of my shape 
would suddenly go wild and wacky over here and start taking in a great deal more space. I've been able to draw this shape right into the middle of his face simply because the ear is staying relatively still in relation to the face. However, when a face or a head is moving quite a lot, what you actually then need to do is do individual shapes for the ear and then just do the side that is affected and then do a separate one for the front of the face. So we might then do one for the nose to cover this area in the middle. So we would track the nose and then link a shape to the nose for the centre of his face. But because his head is not actually turning much, this part of the shape isn't going and looking wild and wacky. But it would do should his head change simply because this part of the shape that we've created is on a different plane now than the bit that we actually tracked. So do bear that in mind. If you've got a complex moving item, you might need to make your shapes a lot smaller than I'm actually going to make them in this tutorial. So you do a track for an ear and then you would just draw the shape around that plane and then you do a track for the side of the face which we're going to do in a minute and then you would just do a shape for the side of the face whereas in this case I'm actually going to be doing a much bigger shape to overlap this one because there's not sideways movement, he's not turning his head. But if he was turning his head the last thing we would do is we would track say his nose and do an area for his nose and obviously we do one for his head as well. So the next one we want to do is the cheek over here. So let's go there and let's select our Bezier tool. We're going to start a new mat. In actual fact, we'll probably include some of his hair in this, I suspect. But anyway, we'll go from there, click and drag, click and drag. Then we'll come down the side of his face. I'm going to zoom in a bit so I can see it a bit clearer. I'm only doing this roughly and in a hurry. So don't expect it to be perfect. I would obviously spend quite a considerable amount of time on this in real world. Now what I've got to at this point is where another mat would definitely be included so I can actually start to click 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 as long as these mats are overlapping each other there's not going to be any holes in fact I could probably risk going up to somewhere like that um, his hair I would cover with another mat actually so there we go we've got the whole thing moved around there we go so now we've got the second one, oops, now I need to go back to where my point was, I hit the space bar by accident, got the little white dots showing me that that is the place, X to move it up, Z to zoom out, I've moved a point by accident, control Z, Z to move out, there we go. Now what I need to do is firstly name it so I don't want to track it so I can turn off tracking, double click it and I can call this my cheek mat, hit return. And the cheek mat needs to be linked to the cheek track. So we go back down to layer properties, link to track, cheek track gets linked to, sorry, cheek mat gets linked to cheek track. And now we hit the space bar just to see how that looks. And you know what? We've got a pretty good result. And the two are overlapping brilliantly. So we've got two mats that overlap, so we're going to see most of his face throughout all of this. Now, if we're unhappy with any points, again, we can just cycle through and check what we think. So we're unhappy with the points at this point up here in his hair. So let's zoom into his hair, and we want to move them. It's actually better to do a sort of a marquee selection and select all the points you want to move together. And then you can move individual points in the same way that you've moved them before. Oops. Again, it's mucking around with me because of the uh, recording software. So we've moved those points. As soon as that's done, I'm not going to move anymore because it's not behaving, but as soon as it's done, a new keyframe is created. And if you need to move any other points, you might as well use the same keyframe as opposed to creating lots and lots of different keyframes. But you can go around and move all these points however you want to. Okay, so we have created our tracks, and we have created our mats. We have linked our mats to our tracks so that they are animated. So now all we need to do is take that shape data, that animated mat data, and take it and put it into After Effects. So to do that, you select any one of your tracks, come down to the Track tab, and go to this area over here where it says Export Data, and go down to Export Shape Data. Click on Export Shape Data. We've only got one option, which is Mocha Shape Data for After Effects. And then what we actually want is not the selected layer, but all visible layers. 
because you see over here I've only got two that are visible my cheek mat and my ear mat they're the only two that I actually have visible and then I click copy to clipboard I don't need to save them I just copy them to clipboard and then I go over to After Effects select my layer which is my shapes layer if you remember the mask layer at the top was just the masks on this particular item over here the shape layer so far we've just got the ones which include the candle mat and the hole select that and then do edit paste well the first thing you notice is it looks wrong why does it look wrong two reasons the main reason is my current time indicator is at the wrong place I should have had my current time indicator at the beginning of my workflow the second one is the blend modes are wrong so what I'm going to do is control Z to undo that and I'm going to take my current time indicator back to the beginning and now I'm going to do edit paste in it comes and now I have both of these selected notice both of them selected so if I make any changes here everything will change so the first thing I need to do is unselect it make sure nothing is selected then I can go to my ear mat which is the one we obviously can't see and change it from multiply to add and now we have the ear mat showing and the cheek mat showing and if I just take this to say one second and do a RAM preview you can see that we've brought the guy out and we've begun to do the rotoscoping now I might have put a bit of a feather on the edge of my shapes or whatever and I'd have done his hair and used the same kind of feather that I had over here with this particular one if you remember which we did with the ear mat just a feather in the hair but now if we want to create a new background for the man it's as simple as doing layer new solid and then choosing whatever color you want and banging at the bottom and putting whatever you want on there so some fractal noises and some different bits and pieces whatever but we've created a new background we've isolated him from the original if I hold the Z key and double click and get the full screen so we've isolated him from the original we have got rid of this horrendous black we can put whatever we want behind him we can have him with a picture of blue sky behind him if we want and if we wanted to keep these items we would have masked them in After Effects and only use shapes for the important things which are the moving items everything else that's static we'd have kept with just masks well I hope you found this tutorial useful I hope you've seen the incredible potential to be able to do rotoscoping with Mocha for AE and that you'll actually begin to get it out and use it because it's a superb piece of software my name's Andrew Davis. thank you for watching mm -hmm.